It's so beautiful, I almost don't want to speak, but hey guys, I'm ZSH Plays. welcome back to Tecton Zoo. As you can see, today we're going to be adding the beautiful new fallow deer into the zoo. Or to be more precise, we're going to be here, building them an entire park next to Tecton Zoo. So first things first, how good is the new European DLC? The animals look really good and there are so many building pieces, I don't know where to start. Um, I've managed to use a few of them in this build, um, more on that later, but yeah, it is really good. I'm really looking forward to getting into some of those pieces, especially things like the decayed brickwork and all the small pieces. There's a hell of a lot of uh, room for improving Tecton with some of those pieces enabling us to do things that we've not really been able to do before in terms of detailing, especially like I say the decayed pieces. I think I've mentioned before the the difficulty of trying to make buildings entirely out of white concrete and keep them looking realistic because you don't get any of the decay if everything just looks absolutely perfect so it's going to be really good to get those in. Now in regards to the fallow deer, why am I building a park? So here in England we don't really keep a fallow deer in zoos because they actually live in the wild here so normally you actually find them in parks rather than in zoos just free roaming so I decided to build them a park next to Tecton rather than put them in the zoo itself which is so good because I've mentioned before how desperate I am to actually get some stuff outside the zoo but I just never have time because any time I spend detailing the outside of the zoo is time I could be spending making cool new habitats uh, for you guys to watch so I never get around to it and um, this is the perfect opportunity to make a huge area outside Tecton look really nice and give us some little glimpses of it when we're in the zoo and things to look at in the background which is what I've wanted to do for ages but we're actually going to get a good habitat out of it as well so I'm basing this park on two real parks here in England the first is called Richmond Park that is in South London um, and is a huge huge uh, I think it's a royal park um, that has free roaming red and fallow deer in it um, my gran used to take me there when I was little and I used to love it going to see the deer and I'm also basing it on a much smaller park uh, in the north of England near where I live called Roundey Park um, which is where I've got this lake from it's always good to take stuff from real life it just helps you to make it a more realistic shape and feel etc I've got to say building a realistic park was quite a challenge for me when you look at a, a park in real life it tends to be a path with a few trees along it and then just huge expanses of grass so that sounds like something that would be really easy to build and it's certainly really easy to build one that doesn't look very good but trying to make something look decent when it's just a huge expanse of grass is really tough in real life you can just have a giant big old square of grass and it will look exactly like a giant big old square of grass but in Planet Zoo or, or any uh, game really if you just have a giant square of exactly the same texture it looks rubbish so it's been a real challenge to uh, make some of the larger parts of this park look good I think it would take a very long time to get this to look as good as I want it to um, so the plan is I am going to go back off camera so to speak and do some more work on this at some point in the future because I've got a feeling that tediously placing tiny amounts of dring grass just poking through the terrain um, scattering pebbles um, things like that that is going to be required to make this look as good as I want it to and um, I simply don't have time to do that for an area as enormous as this um, in one episode um, but don't worry it does look pretty good <laughs> when it's done but um, there will be some further improvements made to it you can see here I'm doing some terrain work now so on a nice hilly wooded area at the back which is going to be where the deer live and then just a few terrain changes in and around the park itself I can't go too crazy with it which is a shame because that's a very quick way of making things look good in Planet Zoo but you know parks are flat you don't design a park to have hills and things like that in it because who wants to walk uphill so um, both the parks I'm basing this on uh, anyway are very flat indeed but I have introduced a hilly 
wooded area at the back for the deer. Um, the, the park is going to be split sort of half and half, so half for the guests and half for the deer. Another thing that makes this an interesting challenge, of course, is that we're in franchise mode, which brings us a problem. So basically I've got two choices here. As soon as I introduce fallow deer into this park, then a, a small percentage of the guests are going to have the fallow deer as one of the animals that they want to see. If I give them access to the park, then they're going to have an enormous walk from the zoo entrance to get to the park to see the deer. And by the time they've done that, it's going to be time to go home. They won't have seen any of the other um, animals that they want to come and see. Uh, they'll be unhappy um, and they'll have spent most of their time walking with no access to food and no animals to look at. So that's going to make some very unhappy guests. Alternatively, I can give them no access to the park at all, which means they won't see one of the animals that they've come to see, which will make them a bit unhappy, but they will be able to see all the other animals they want to see because they won't be wasting their time trekking to the park and back. So that's what I'm going to go with. Obviously for the cinematics at the end you will see guests in the park. So I shoot all the cinematics in sandbox mode so we can get the lighting as nice as I want it. But yeah, as the zoo actually functions in franchise mode, there won't be any guests in here because that is just going to be a uh, an absolute killer for my guests' happiness. Anyway, enough about the background, let's get onto the building. So this here is the first of the new pieces that I'm using. It's the new wall set, which I really like. It's always good to have something rustic. Um, another cool thing about this little part project is I get to use loads of pieces that I wouldn't normally use. Um, obviously, we've got a very defined aesthetic in the zoo itself, and um, anything that isn't made out of white concrete doesn't really get a looking. So <laughs> this is uh, it's fun to use this. Um, and then I'm just making a little uh, light life belt for the um, lake to keep people nice and safe I'm just making a little stand for it uh, and I'm using one of the new uh, animal memorial signs there as well I really like that feature um, I think one of the um, few areas that Planet Zoo is lacking in is developing a real connection with the animals in New Zoo and being able to have memorials for animals that are no longer in New Zoo I think is a really um, a really cool idea. I actually made one from scratch, um, which I ended up not showing in the episode. I can't remember why. I don't think it set the right vibe, but um, sadly, um, one of my favorite animals in the zoo, Maurice the meerkat, who was our first meerkat that we got in, died of old age, uh, probably a couple of months ago now. And I did make a little memorial for him next to the meerkat enclosure. Um, so it's good to have that option automated now. Um, sorry to drop that news about Maurice on you. Um, I know it will hit some of you hard. <laughs> um, so I've also put those little seagull pieces in. Um, I love those. Obviously, I wish we had birds in the game, but because the guests can't get any closer than the path around the lake to it, they actually look really effective hidden away in the reeds there. And I'll show you more of them in the cinematics at the end. I'm working on the deer part of the habitat here. I want them to have a uh, pretty thickly wooded part for when they want some shelter and then some large open areas so that the guests can see them properly as well. And while I finish that off, let's talk a bit about the rest of the Europe pack. So apart from throwing the decay decals and a few other things all over the zoo, uh, which is what I'll be doing very soon, um, in terms of the other animals, the badger, which is an animal I absolutely love, that will definitely be going into Tecton Zoo as part of a new area that I've got planned to have badgers and beavers together in a sort of British wildlife area now that we are rewilding um, beavers into the country. So that would be cool. I've not decided yet exactly how I'm going to go with it, whether it's going to be modernist or whether it's going to be like a little um, simpler sort of reserve style um, area within the zoo. Uh, let me know in the comments which one of those ideas sounds best to you and I'll take that on board. The lynx, I really like. I'm a huge fan of lynx and just cats in general, apart from when my cat uh, jumps on me when I'm trying to record. Um, so that I'm going to try and find space for as well. The Ibex is definitely a possibility. I do have um, some plans for a mountain area within the zoo if there's room for it because I really want a snow leopard in the zoo. Um, and the ibex would go very nicely in there. I had planned on doll sheep, but maybe I can get both of them in for a bit of variety. I'm sure I can squeeze a fire salamander in somewhere. Maybe in the Grand Plaza, 
now I say that because I think the original plan for the Grand Plaza was for all the animals to be semi-aquatic so there was going to be the penguins and then I was going to have tree frogs but then I sort of ran out of uh, exhibit animals at the time but I'm thinking now maybe we could use the fire salamander the other species of tree frog and have like an all amphibian exhibit there that could work nicely so yeah potentially all the animals will be going into the zoo at some point one thing I forgot to mention actually about the park is the concept behind it. So this park would actually be run by the zoo. So often when zoos or any company really buys land, they can strike deals with the, the government or the local council to reduce the price. Um, so for instance, in this case, perhaps the zoo agreed to also open and run a, a public park with free access and free roaming deer in it uh, and that would reduce the overall cost of the land acquisition so this park would have been built back in the 1930s when the zoo was first built so i've put a really sort of um, rustic stable building in here for the deer no fancy modernism here just a nice brick build to keep them warm in the winter in the wild you know they would have woods and, and forest to retreat into when it's really cold or really bad weather so i've given them a couple of stables as well and then i built these for london zoo 1985 i thought it'd be fun to just stick a couple of football pitches in in a different area outside the zoo which i've sunk down into the terrain so it looks like the markers or the chalk on the grass or whatever it is is sort of uh, fading away you've just got the remains of the football pitch there because they've not been maintained which i thought was a nice idea eventually one day the entire outside of the zoo will be designed like that so there's no sort of dead areas but um, it's going to be a while before the whole thing is finished and now we're going to put the actual habitat for the deer in so like i say just due to the limitations of franchise mode i'm not actually going to have them free roaming um they've got a huge habitat though i think if i recall correctly it's like 23,000 meters squared <laughs> something like that it's definitely the biggest habitat i've ever built and i put the guest gates in and i hate them <laughs> i really do not like the guest gates and it's really annoying there's only one style um but I, it occurred to me watching this now that i don't actually need them because they're not going to be any guests going in there so i know they look pretty janky but they are just going to get deleted and replaced with more chain link which will make it all look better and then the last thing to do is to get some infrastructure in here for the deer so i'm using the tecton keeper hut uh, and then i'm just hiding away a really simple staff building as well and we'll put a transformer between the two of them to get power and there'll be just a little dedicated staff just to look after the park uh, make sure we keep the deer nice and happy and that is fallow deer park done thank you so much for watching as always i hope you enjoyed it stick around for the cinematics um, where you'll see a whole lot more of the beautiful fallow deer and some of the surrounding areas of the zoo that i don't normally show now that i've made them look nice there's a few workshop items in there so thank you to polsley who provided the majority of them that will be in the steam collection as always i am hopefully will be back in a few days time with a little Christmas episode of Tecton, um, which I want to do. Um, no guarantees, but that should be up at some point next week before Christmas. Uh, otherwise, there's not much point in doing a Christmas episode. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you soon.